two more minutes. We got two more minutes. Y'all ready? Josh, Josh. Let's turn it up. 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 Let's hey, hey, so when you come. Cause we go. So when you come to chosen, come like hey, now when you come to chosen. turned up. I put a T on the end. Turned up. Turned up. Y'all ready for it? All right, let's do it. Let's do it.
Fellas, I appreciate that. Ooh, 
I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. How y'all doing tonight? Good. Fantastic. Cool. Well, um, I, I just got a small, small little word tonight we're going to talk about. <clears throat> and I'm going to need some volunteers later. So uh, it's all right, Bernie. Thank you. <laughs> I knew Bernie was going to raise his hand. That's why you my boy. That's why you my boy. But first, we're going to start out with the word of the Lord God Almighty. Everybody got your word? Everybody got your Bible? Let's go ahead and let's turn to Ephesians 6. But before, hold on, hold on, hold on, time out. Um, what's, our, what's our scripture for the Chosen Conference? First Peter. First Peter. Oh, woo, they got it now? Oh, like they're going to get a piece of candy. All right. All right. First Peter 2 9. And what does First Peter 2 9 say? For you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Oh, oh, y'all need to say it over. Y'all need to say it over. Rewind. All right. So we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people who has been called, called, Set forth the praises of the God who has called us out of darkness. darkness into his marvelous. Fantastic. We made it. We made it. We crossed the finish line. That's good. All right. So that's First Peter 2.9. All right. Go to Ephesians. We're going to start in chapter 6. Ain't that awesome? Now, Anessa almost preached my message this morning. She, she, and that's just great confirmation that that's what God needed us to hear today. And can I go ahead and tell you, um, if you don't already know me, <laughs> Sorry, uh, you know, uh, I'm, we're going to talk real tonight. Is it okay? Yeah. I'm a real talker. I don't know. I don't even know if that's even a thing, but I'm a real talker. Like I don't just talk and I, I, I don't like fluff. Um, I, when I was a little girl, I hated dresses because they had a little fluff on it. And I think it like has been with me, through, thank you, translate, all the way through my life. I don't like fluff. Um, I have found that getting straight to the point can be very beneficial, right. um, as long as I do it with love, and I'm still learning that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Can I tell on myself? Can I tell on myself? I'm still learning it, right? So we're going to go to Ephesians 6. All right? Anessa, Mr. T set us up beautiful. Mm, mm, mm. Talking about, what did Mr. T talk about? Elephant in Mr. T, they know the elephant in the room. <laughs> the elephant in the room, addressing the elephant in the room. And Anessa set us up beautifully this morning. What did she talk about? The grace to stand. Grace to stand, right? Are we all at the same level when it comes to standing? No, right? We're all at different levels, but are we required to stand where we are? Yes, we are. Absolutely, right? Um, Squad 5 did a phenomenal job this morning. So we're going to pick up where Anessa uh, kind of left off at, all right? Verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of my might. Huh? Y'all ain't got that Bible version? Y'all ain't got that? Oh, that's the Bowmanese vo- version. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. So, all right, I'm going to read it right. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand. Did y'all see stand? All right. Just want to make sure your eyes working. All right, number 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness and of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. The what? Whole Whole armor of God. The what? Whole Whole armor. Not just the helmet? Not not just the shoes? Oh, not just the belt? The what? The whole armor of God, we're going to come back to that, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And we're going to stop right there. Now, when I was reading, I was reading these verses because Vicky said, hey, y'all, in my spirit, I feel it really big. We need to do Ephesians 6. I said, all right, right. She says, hey, study it. Let's study Ephesians 6. I said, all right, that's cool. And I could not get past verse number 13, the end of it. 
right? Having done all to stand, right? Having done all. So I couldn't get past it. And I said, all right, Holy Spirit, I hear what you're saying to me. I hear what you're saying. So we're going to talk about one simple little word tonight. It's three letters. It's a cuss word in our society today. And we're going to talk about that. I mean, if we're real talking, if we're real talking tonight, right? It is a cuss word in our, in our society tonight. And that word is all. I mean, it really is. All right, so let's talk about it. Y'all want to talk about it. Say, and let's talk about it. What does it mean? What does all mean? Everything. Everything. All right. All right. So if I had a bag of M&Ms and I say, Will, I want you to eat all the, ba- all the M&Ms in the bag. What are you going to do? He going to eat all or are you going to leave one? No, no you ain't because he going to eat all of them, right? In totality, right? If I said, Alyssa, I need you to run all of a 100 meter dash. What you going to do? (laughs) Hey, that's the honest answer. That's the honest answer. She says, we're going to talk about that, Wheelock. We're going to talk about that, right? (laughs) So if we say all, we're talking about the total, the whole thing, right? The wholeness, right? If we're talking about all, we're talking about not just a little bit, not just some of it, not for, you know, the most of it. We're talking about? All of it, right? All in itself explains itself. It's all of it, right? If I punch you and I don't hold nothing back, I'm going all in. I'm going all for us. I got right. Let's practice some all. Y'all want y'all want to practice some all? I want to practice some all. Um, no, how good are you? You good tonight? Your lungs feel pretty good. You think you can help me tonight? Come in, Noah. Noah Parker, right here. Y'all give him a hand. Baby Parker, I, I, I knew him when he was a baby, and he's, he is as tall as me, and my self-esteem is not shot. All right. <laughs> um, Noah, I have this balloon right here. All right? And I know, look, this is going to be deep. It's going to be real deep, Noah. All right? I need you to give your all and blow this balloon up. All right? Don't faint on me. All right? I want you to give your all and blow that balloon up. You ready? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel like a talk show host. Ladies and gentlemen, on the count, on, on the count of three, Noah is going to show us how to give all and blow up that balloon. You ready? Are you ready? Don't cry. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness, the action that is happening in this room right now. It is overwhelming. Please hold on to your chairs. Oh, hey, did, did he give it? Did he give it all? Did he, get, he keep going. Oh, give it all you got now, no. Give it all you got. Let me stand back. Give it all you got. That's all you got. I want to thank you for that. Thank you, folks. That's all I, I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for that. Who in here could do a hand, uh, uh, a cartwheel? Uh, I, uh, Trey, you mind helping me? You know how to, you know how to do a, a cartwheel, folks? You know how to do a Trey, you know how to do a cartwheel? Yeah! Oh, Trey, come on up here. Hey, guys, this is Trey right here, Trey Chester. <laughs> Trey Chester. All right. Trey, you got it. Trey, Trey, Trey. Trey, don't disappoint us now. No, don't do it. No, you ain't gonna, I ain't gonna make you cartwheel around the whole church, although that would be awesome. <laughs> I do, be awesome. Trey, I need you to give your all right now and do one cartwheel. Just give your all now. Give it all. Give it all you got, Trey. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, now, Trey. <laughs> now, and that's how you do it. And that's how you do it. You see that? He, that was an art form, Trey. That was art. God. All right. So Noah gave his all, blew up a balloon. Right? Trey gave his all, and he did a cartwheel. Right? Right? He gave his all. Did you give your all, Trey? Oh, we're going to talk about that. Lord, y'all setting me up beautiful for the night. 
All right, I need somebody to give their all and bust this balloon, burst it for me. Now you say you were gonna do, you gonna do half. Well, we don't need no half. We don't have. Uh, uh, Ryan, do me a favor, brother. Can you burst that balloon for me real fast? Give y'all. <laughs> And that's how you do it. <laughs> right? So, so if we're talking about giving all, we're talking about the whole thing, right? In Ephesians 6:10, it says, having done all to stand. In the Amplified Version, it says, having done all that the circumstance requires or demands. Right? Having done all, right? And, you know, if we're really honest, and most of you guys have really told me today, um, we, we see it, um, giving all is one of those stipulations in our society right now that is a cuss word. Because when it comes down to it, we don't actually give our all. Right? We don't give our all. We give some. And that little bit is equal to all. Right? We're we talking real tonight. We're talking real. Now, when we are talking about natural things that I like to do versus what you like to do, you know, hey, that's all. That's a good and gravy. But you know what? When we're talking about the kingdom of God, you're a little bit equal. All is, It's a lot. God does not require us to do a little bit. When he says all, God means all. He means all. He means all. Now, let's talk about where we get that all concept. I am a great athlete. I, I, I'm, on, I'm not bragging on myself, Jamie. I'm just saying, like, it's facts. I'm a good athlete. I'm a good athlete. I love to run. I love to run. I love it. Love basketball. I'm not too good at it, but I like, I like it. All right? So, uh, anybody play Little League? Little League, softball, baseball, rec league, rec league ball? Awesome, right? Nothing wrong with rec league. I love it. I love watching those little kids tackle each other on the basketball court like it's football. I love it. I love it. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that, right? But the problem that I have with, with Little League and Rick Ball now is that you get a trophy for just participating. You just, you just hey, I went to this Little League game for one of my kids um, that was at the daycare. And... Uh, Sweetest, cutest kid ever. Sweetest kid ever. Went out in the outfield, and because he was so excited, Miss Boom, Miss Ann, Miss Ann, please come see me play ball. I said, okay. So I went to go see him play ball, and he is out in left field, no music, and the dude is dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and I lean over to his mom, I'm like, what is Zach doing? She said, honey, we have tried our best. He he is not interested in baseball. I said, he out there on Soul Train out in left field. So, what, what, so, I mean, really, but at the end of the season, right, the kid that hit a lot of home runs, he got the trophy. But guess what? So did Zach. Yeah. But Zach didn't participate. All Zach did was boogie down in the outfield, right? <laughs> and he got a reward for it. So we learned from, from our experience We've learned that if we give a little bit, then we get the same reward as those who give all of it. Right? We give just an inch and we say, oh, you know what? I deserve my prize. But guess what? You don't deserve You didn't do all of it. Right? The kid that slid in bases, the kid that tried their best to work as a team, he got, he got a trophy. He deserved that. I mean, he worked for it. He worked hard for it. Yes, yes. But the kid that just said, I don't really care, and uh, didn't, do, didn't really do a whole lot, Nate. Didn't do, didn't, they just danced in the outfield. They stayed in one spot on the basketball court, right? He got the same exact prize as the kid that gave, gave his all. And therein lies the problem. Why should, why should does, does God require, when God says all, he means all. Right? So, so why does when, when God says, oh, we give a little bit and think that's enough? 
we real talking. We real talking tonight, right? Literally, I like little. Some of you guys are getting ready to drive, scary enough. Oh my, scary, real scary, all right? And we got all these road signs. Y'all see all these road signs? Y'all see all the road signs? When you are driving, do you have to obey all of those road signs? Yes. Huh? Yes. All right, all right. <laughs> oh, 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 here we go. You know we got offices in the house. You do know that. Keep throwing it out there. We're going to take license tonight. <laughs> I'm making some citizens arrest. All right. So we got all these road signs. Are you to obey those road signs? Yes. Absolutely. Now, do we always, mm -mm. No. right, if we honest, right, my, I mean, I got a lead foot. It like to go down to the metal, and I like to fly, right? <laughs> okay? So not all the time, but you know what? Let's just say you are speeding, oh. and you get the blue light special. <laughs> do, 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 do. Come right behind you, and you have to stop. The officer comes up to your window, ma'am. Can I see your license and registration, please? Say, so, yes, sir. He said, um, ma'am, you were going 85 in the, in the 35. <laughs> Brie and a chest. <laughs> All right? All right? And you say, uh, but officer, I did some of the speed limit. I, I did a little bit of it. I obeyed a little bit of it. He gonna turn to you and say, you know what? You awesome woman of God. <laughs> You are so great. I want to thank you. Thank you for giving a little bit. I want to appreciate you giving a little bit. You deserve the whole world. Matter of fact, I'm going to make you the president of the United States. <laughs> right? No. Is he going to do that? Mm -mm, mm -mm. If he did, it, you are dreaming. You need to wake up. You need to wake up. Right? No. Because if you disobey a road sign, the consequence is you go to jail. This, uh, this, huh? That's, a speed That's a lot over the speed limit. That's true. That's like a super, super, super speeder, right? Right? But let's just say a stop sign. Well, officer, I, I stopped a little bit at the stop sign. I, I did it a little bit, Eli. Don't I get a prize for it? Give me a cookie, officer. Pat me on the back, right? I did it a little bit, right? But, but what about the family that you almost hit in the van? But you stopped a little bit. Oh, you did it a little bit. Oh, that's so good. Give yourself a cookie, right? <laughs> Giving all requires that we give all. Right. Not a little bit, not halfway. It's all. And it's a cuss word because we have been brainwashed that if we give a little bit, then that's all. But effort doesn't equal all. Right. You giving a little bit of effort doesn't equal all. And you know, it's the biggest lie in the church. It's the biggest lie. We come to church. We real talking. Real talking. Come on, real talking. You, you already said all your Bible verses today. I heard them in breakout session. You already said church and Bible and Jesus at least eight times today. So you got your religious answers out the way. Let's real talk. We come to church, right? We come to church, right? And the youth leader says, hey, I need you. I need you. I need you to, to give you all in youth group. First thing we do, <clears throat> well, I give a little bit. I ain't gonna give all of it. Because it's not something that we wanna do, right? So we just give lip service. It's, we, we deserve the whole prize when we just give a little bit. Is that the truth? Yeah. <sighs> Is it biblical? It's not. It's not. Mm, 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 all. I just cussed again, sorry. All, right? <laughs> we got some myths when it comes to giving all. One of those little myths is, and I heard it today, can I just go ahead and say, it? but if I give all in my heart, if I, I mean, I've given, all, I've given all in my heart, I have. So I've given all. I've given all right here in my head, um, but there's no fruit of it. Uh, let, let me tell you. Um, do you know how to worship? Yes. Praise and worship, come on. <laughs> Boom. Come on. There go you all. Oh, um, I know how to pray for people. Oh, you do? Oh, awesome. Pray for somebody. 
right? There's no fruit to it. We just talking. We can talk good. Can we not talk good? Oh, we can talk good. Matter of fact, if we all did all that was required uh, out of us, Isaiah, if we all did all, we will all be in a different spot than where we are. That's including me, right? Right? If we all did all, that's deep. That's, if we all did all of what was required of us, we would be in totally different spots in our life. Right? Let's go to Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. Y'all okay? We're going to real talk tonight. We got that mindset when we were a kid, then we grow up. And we got an, we, we're an adult now. Because when we give a little bit, we deserve a lot. And then we go into the career field. And your boss tells you, hey, I need you to, I need you to do all this paperwork. I need you to take all those boxes and I need you to unstack them and put them on the shelf. And what we do? We leave, we do about maybe one box, and then we talk about, oh, I'm tired, I need some water, oh, I need, right? And what happens? I don't think your boss pats you on the back and says, congratulations. You get a pink slip, baby. <laughs> you out of there, baby, right? Right? All of it. God requires us to do all when he says to do all. Yes. Having done all the circumstance requires, it did not say just do a little bit. Right? Let's go to Matthew. Who's talking in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8? How you know? Red letters. <laughs> right? Y'all remember that song? That was good. All right. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. Right? Jesus is talking. He said, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. Are they doing good? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're drawing nigh, they're drawing nigh to Jesus with their mouth. They're talking about drawing nigh. They're honoring him with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They're just talking. They're saying good stuff. Yeah. Saying awesome stuff. But there's no fruit in where, they, where they're going. We talk about we give all in church or we give all in our life, but the fruit of where we are in our life doesn't, doesn't look like we give all. So are we really giving all? Having done all to stand? Remember, you got to do all and then to stand. Right? There's a stipulation in that. We like to believe that if we just do a little bit, then God will make up the rest. If I just say, he does. God does. And listen, talked about it this morning. There is a grace to stand. There is a grace to stand, Eli. It really is. There is a grace to stand. Right? But it's Having done all, when we have done all that we know to do, then God's grace takes over. Yeah. But we don't understand that. We think, oh, I'm sick. I, I hadn't read any healing scriptures, right? Yeah. Hadn't, did, hadn't put my faith out there at all. My mama and daddy do that for me, oh. right? Your mama and daddy do that for you, right? But guess what? Who needs the healing? Mama and daddy don't need it, yeah. right? Who needs the healing? You do if you if you're sick, right? So, oh God, I'm sick. I'm sick, right? My mom and daddy used to pray for, but I'm sick. Do your thing. Fairy dust me, bam. All right. But that's what we do. It's funny, right? We do a little bit and then expect God to do the rest of it. But that's not how it works. It's having done all, Chase. Having done all that you know how to do. If we're honest with ourselves, do we really do all that we know how to do? Do we really do? We don't. We really don't. But yet we want all the benefits of somebody who does all. Right? Somebody that has worked their honey off to get it. To, that stood when they were supposed to. We want that benefit, but we don't want to do the work behind it. Right? We want to run the 100 meter dash, but we just want to go halfway and get the prize. I have never heard of somebody winning the 100 meter race that just did it halfway. I have not. And if I do, I'm going to trip them up because I work hard. I work hard to win that race. You know what I'm saying? Right? It's just talking if we're not doing it. 
right? What are some things? What are some things that we're battling? We got to stand up against. You don't need to stand if you're not fighting anything. People that are too comfortable, we talk about it in seeking convenience. People that, that choose that easy road, it's not bad all the time. Just when you choose it all the time, right? Right? So convenient. You choose the easy way. You comfortable, right? Easy, good, comfortable. Is that the way to go all the time? I was going somewhere with that, but I forgot. Give me a second. <laughs> It'll come back in a little bit. All right, so what, oh, that's it. What are some things that we face? What are some things that we stand up against? Huh? Peer pressure. Absolutely. Do we, stay, do we have to battle peer pressure? Absolutely. What's something else we got to battle? This is our generation, right? People that's too comfortable, that's it. People that's too comfortable, that don't move, that don't go anywhere, they're not fighting anything, right? right? But the people that are fighting, we're standing for something. We, we got peer pressure. What's some other things we're fighting against? Drama. Drama. Other people. Huh? Temptations. Huh? What other things? Lust. Lust of the flesh, temptation, absolutely. What else? Huh? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Relationships, right? Uh, what about statistics? We got a lot of statistics that says only four percent. Let's just take all of us kids. If, if only four percent is gonna are gonna remain a Christian, nine out of ten of us are addicted to sex online. One out of four of us inflict self injury. That's us in the room right now, right? Right. One out of ten of us have been raped, right? Statistics. Yeah. It's facts that back it up. We got a lot of stuff that we're up against, not just personal stuff, but, but, but against our generation, yeah. but against us, right? So it's not, we, and then we got our personal stuff on top of that. We got to battle with our emotions, right? We got to battle with people betraying us, people deceiving us. That's a lot. That's a lot of things, right? So is there, is there a reason to stand? Is there, is there a reason to stand? So if there is a reason to stand, why not give our all so we can? Is it important to you? Right? Why don't we stand? Why don't we give our all to stand? Why don't we give our all to stand? When I was in first grade, me and Vicky was in first grade, there was a bully in the school. I know I told some of y'all this. And I, she was just, she just beat people up and roll them down the hill every day at recess. It was my first year at Franklin County, my first year. And I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. And my mama always taught me, baby, if somebody ever do that, you go, you do all you can. You go to that teacher, you come to me, you go to the kids, you try to protect, you do all that you can to help this person. So I knew that some of my friends were getting bullied and they was getting rolled out. It was a long hill. At the end, it was like a puddle of water. <laughs> it, was, it was muddy. It always stayed muddy because the, there was some water that leaked right there, right? So every day, she beat up somebody, roll them down that hill, right? Every day. And I just felt so bad in my heart. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Mama. I went to my mama. Mama. She beat such and such up today and rolled them down the hill. She said, baby, did you, did you tell your teacher? I said, uh, no, ma'am, I didn't. She said, but honey, you ain't doing all you can. I said, okay, tomorrow, because I know she's going to beat somebody up. I, I'm going to go tell my teacher. So the next day, oh my goodness, I go to school. She picked two people, beat them up, both of them together, roll them down the hill. Now, she was not a little girl. She was, she was, she was in first grade, but she looked like she was in third. You know what I'm saying? Like fifth grade. And when I'm just two feet tall, she looks six feet. You know what I'm saying? But every day she would beat people up and roll them down the hill. And I would say, oh my goodness, mama, today she beat up such and such, such and such, and such and such, and just rolled them down the hill. And they got muddy, they didn't have any extra clothes. She said, baby, did you tell your teacher like I told you to? I said, well, yes, ma'am. I did all you told me to do. She said, well, baby, let me tell you something. Honey, sometimes you're going to have to stand up to her. Somebody's going to have to stand up to her. I said, well, mom, I don't know, she big and she scary and she like to fight, mama. She said, well, baby, sometimes we got to do all we got to do. You got to do all, you got to defend yourself. I said, oh, man, I don't know, mom. Uh-uh. I, I ignored the situation for a long time. Looked around it, didn't even talk. 
But one day she got the bright idea. She went to my sister. She said, hey, today I'm going to beat you up. And I'm going to roll you down the hill. And I looked at my sister. I said, no, you ain't. You ain't touching my sister. <laughs> Woo, no. Uh-uh. No. She said, you want to? I said, why don't you go beat up such and such? such. She said, I already did that. I already beat up, you know, Jennifer Neal. <laughs> Today I'm getting her because I hadn't beat her up and rolled her down the hill. Oh, not since my stomach started turning. I mean, because I've been dodging her. Right? I've been like, oh, no, 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 no. My mama said I need to stand up to it, but I don't think I can do it. I don't think, oh, I got diarrhea. I don't think I'm going to make it. Oh, no, I don't know. I can't do it. I can't do it. Right? Well, it came time for recess, and I said, hey, 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 you know what? We're going to run. We're going to run around this playground. She won't be able to catch us because we was fast. So we went. And I said, Vicky, stay right beside me. You stay right here with me. You stay with me. So I don't know, we got to plan, I don't know, maybe playing four square or something, and I lost track of my sister. And uh, next thing I knew, she was over by the slide with the, girl, with the bully. And I looked up, I said, oh my gosh, I'm about to throw up. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to stand up to her. So I go over there, and I'm like, because I ain't going to let my sister get hit, no. I ain't going to let my sister get hit. So she walked up, she said, oh, you want to get rolled down the hill too? I said, look, 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 look. This is, this is my sister. Don't, don't beat anybody up. Don't do it. Look, I told the teacher, and I told my mama, they all know that you beat people up. She said, so? I don't care. I said, oh, man, butterflies. Oh, my goodness. This is not, oh, my goodness. And my mama, words keep running through my mind. You got to stand up. Stand up for what you believe in. Stand up. Stand up. And she said, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to beat both of y'all up at the same time and roll you down the hill. And I said, oh, no, you ain't. And I don't know what happened after that, but Vicky got the top. She started doing this number. And I got the bottom, and I started doing this number. Right? It was a good double team. Just, uh, 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 uh. And we beat her up, and we rolled her down the hill. It was the one of the highlight of my first grade year. <laughs> and we had a group of people, all the kids around. Yay! <laughs> but you know what? I still felt bad. I, did, I didn't do all. I was trying to dodge it. Right? I didn't want to confront it. So I just gave a little bit. I did the, the, the safe things. I, talk, I went around, talked to my mom, and told her. But I, can't, I couldn't face her. I couldn't do it face to face. I couldn't stay. I couldn't do all of it. Because my mama told me I need to stand up to her, right? So we rolled her down the hill, and me and Vicky went down the, down the hill. We met her at the hill. She was just crying. She covered in mud. It was beautiful. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I said, uh, look, look, look. I know she had, had a real, real rough home life, really awful, okay? So me and Vicky went up to her. Look, we know what's going on at the house. We do. Let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. We're gonna, I'm going to do all I can. This is the deal. You're going to stop beating up people and rolling them down the hill. And me and my sister, we'll play with you every single day at recess. Every single day at recess. She said, every day? I said, every day. Every day at recess. But you can't beat up people. When you beat up people, we, we're not your friends that day. Right? That's what she was looking for. That's what she needed. She needed somebody to be a friend, right? So we went out and said, hey, look, you can't beat up nobody. Guess what? To this day, we're best friends. We beat up, rolled her down the hill, and today, what? She, she, didn't beat it, she didn't beat up anybody else. She didn't. She made a decision that day that our friendship was more important than her hurting people. But it didn't happen until I gave all, until I had done all that I, that I knew how to do, right? When Mr. T talked about this, the elephant in the room, we got to confront it. We got to do all that we know. If the elephant is that big, we got to do all that we know to do. We got to cut it up. I don't know why. You know, we might have to eat it one bite at a time. That's what I heard. I don't know about eating the elephant. But, uh, you know, but when we have done all that we know how to do to confront it, God's grace takes over. Right? What prevents us from doing all if we know we need to? Right? A lot of our generation, we like to think it's apathy, lazy, because it is. You lazy. If I ask you to do a 100-meter dash and you only run halfway, that's laziness. 
Especially when you are more than capable of running the 100 meter dash. You're more than capable of running a mile. If you are capable of running a mile and I ask you to run a 100 meter dash and you just do half of it, what you're telling me is, "Mm -mm, I'm lazy. Right? Winning that race is not more is, is not important to me. How I feel at the moment is important to me. Right? We can't have that in God's kingdom. Because in God's kingdom, the kingdom is bigger than we are. Right? We can't afford, he can't afford for us to just do half of what he got. I don't want to do half of the purpose that God has for my life. I want to do the whole thing. Right? Why? I mean, if I'm going to run a race, I want to win the whole race. I want to win it. I don't run a race to say, hey, I want to lose. Woo! Right? I run a race to win it, to get to the end. Right? And if I don't, if I just stop halfway because, oh, they beat me, I'm, I'm going to start giving my all. Laziness, pride. I, I love those people say, I'm the best. Mm, I'm the best at running. Woo, my Kayla, I'm the best. I said, oh, you are. Nice. Look, this, this person right here, they're the best runner that there are. Why don't you, why don't you run up against them? Nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm straight. No, I'm straight. Pride. They talk like they the best all day. All day. But when you put them down to the test, when they have to give their all, you actually find out that they don't have anything to give because they all talk. Right? All talk. Pride. Laziness. But you know what? Those aren't the biggest ones. You know what the biggest one is? It's fear. You know, I, um, me and folk, uh, Antoine was talking the other day, and uh, we was talking about something. And uh, he, he said, you know what? Men, boys, we don't get, we don't cry. We get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that was so, I thought that was the funniest thing in the world. But you know what? <laughs> boys get emotional. But you know what? Fear. We all experience fear to one degree or another. Some of the, I'm not saying all the time, but most of the time that we don't, we don't go to 100, 100 yards, that's a whole 100% fear. We, we scared somebody might reject us. They might not like, you know, they might not like it if we, if we gave our all, right? Uh, past hurts. We gave our all and then we got shot down. And we, then we don't want to give it again. We don't want to give it. We don't want to give it anymore. So we scared to go to 100. Because last time we went, we gave all out. We went all out. We got hurt. Right? I mean, that's valid. Right? Fear, insecurity, fear of rejection, fear of failure. Fear you might screw it up before you even get started. Fear. It's all just fear. Right? And we would like to think that we have some fortitude, that we are strong. Joshua 1 8, be strong and courageous, right? We, would, we, we love to say that, that we are strong and courageous, but being strong and courageous means that you have to commit to it 100%, and sometimes we're scared to. And because we're too scared to, we don't give. We don't give it all, and we don't do it all. Laziness, pride, fear, don't know who you are. If you don't know who you are in Christ, we talked about that last year, mystery in us. It's going to be hard for you to do all. Ignorance. Some people just don't know. They really don't know how to do all. Some of you guys really don't know how to do all. It's Because you know what? Because mama and daddy have done it for you. I'm just saying. Your mama and daddy. I, I talked about it today in uh, convenience. Mama and daddy were in the bathtub. They put the toys in it for you. You can splash, splash, splash. Right? You got cookies and cake. I said, Mama, when I get home from the, from the, from the school, I, I would like my cookies and my milk on the table. And then when I get finished with my snack, I want you to rinse some water with some bubble bath and put all my toys in it so I can play around. And then I want you to drive me off. Drive me off. And then I want you to rock me to sleep and put me to bed. That's great. That's awesome when we're a baby. But you know what the problem is? Is that we grow up and we still expect Mom and Daddy to do that. Oh, we in, we in middle school now. Mama, have my milk and cookies on the table when I get home. And would you run my bath water and put bubbles in it and let me splash and put my toys in it? Now, we expect our parents to do that. 
Right? But I told the class, like, my grandma gave me a little bit of advice, and it was, watch what you do at 12 or you will go to hell. <laughs> and basically what she was saying to me, you are responsible for your own actions. Your thoughts, everything that you do, everything that you say, you are held accountable to them. Right? We held accountable to them. Right? So let's just say, we, we don't know how to give our all right now. We having a, we're having a problem giving our all because it's real, we're real comfortable. We're real comfortable. It's easy. It's convenient. Uh, what would happen if Jesus didn't give his all? Huh? What if Jesus just went a little bit? Oh, Jesus, just, just, just get whipped and then go home. What if Jesus would have just gave a little bit? Huh? No connection. We're not, we won't be re- reconciled with God. Our relationship... We would still be spiritual death. We would still be in spiritual death, right? We would still be sacrificing goats and cows, and that's nasty. I like to eat them, but come on, right? What if Jesus just went halfway? Jesus just went halfway, we locked. What if he just went halfway? Will we still, be, will we still reap the benefit, the whole prize of what we have right now? No, we would not. We would not. Halfway? Right? Really? Jesus went all out. He died for our sins. He didn't even do anything, right? He died for our sins. He went all out for us. Why do we think that we can just give half a little bit and that's okay? Right? I mean, think about it. Jesus gave his life, not, not, not his finger, not his baby toe, his pinky toe. He gave his life. All of it. Not a little bit of it so that we can have all of life in him. That's why you get the benefits of going to church and getting healed, right? Because by his stripes you were healed, right? He went all out. So why do, we, why do we think that if we just do a little bit, we get the whole prize? Is it real unrealistic? I think it's very unrealistic. The world and the church are two totally different things. But guess what? There's a, there's a grace to stand. Yes. There's also a grace to do all. Yes. Right? If I was talking to Lynn Lou Who, Lynn, Linda, uh, today, and she was saying, when I was in college, I, I hated college towards the end. I hated it. I just wanted to get through with it. Right? And uh, I would go talk to Lynn Lou because I had a rough time in college. Uh, my brother died at the very beginning in, in June 2001. And I started college. I left home and started college in August of 2001. Then September 11th happened, and I was already a hot mess. Right. Right? right? So I was going through emotional issues at the same time. And so I would go to Lynn Lou, and I'm like, oh, what do I need to do? I'm, I'm going through this, do, do this. And she would tell me, hey, hey, Ann, just do this, do that, and do that. I said, okay. And she wouldn't see me for months. Wouldn't see me for, for a long time. And she said, you know, I figured out that when I don't, I don't see you for a while, you hadn't did what I told you to do. <laughs> you hadn't. Right. And I said, you know what? You are right. You are right. Because why am I going to waste her time asking her what I need to do and I didn't do the first three things she told me to do? Right? If I'm going to get sick, if I, I want to do all. I want to do it all. So how can we get from step A to step B? Right now we're not giving our all. How do we give our all? By doing it. You trust God, right? Number one, we got to get up. You got to get up. If you ain't doing anything, if you're not doing anything, you got to get up and do something. Is it? You got to make a choice. It's a decision. It's a commitment, right? If you say you're going to do all, it is hard. It's not an easy route. It's not, you got to get up. You got to commit to it. You got to persevere, right? Complete. I'm glad that patience have its complete work, not just half of it. Because I need it. I need it, right? You got to get up. Number two, <laughs> you got to give up. You got to give up. Me, me, and what I want, Eli. Me and what I want. It's hard. But guess what? If we're going to, if giving all is worth it, right? Remember, we. To having done all and then to stand, right? If we're going to give all, we got to give up some stuff, right? right? We got to give up the me, me, me for the kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. (laughs) Number three, we got to grow up. You got to grow up. When I look at you, I don't see a kid. 
I see a person in the kingdom of, the God, of God. That's who I see, right? And I, I love you guys. We love you guys here. We love you. But some of you guys need to grow up. I am not mama. I do not look like your mom. I know it for a fact because I know I don't look like your mom, right? <laughs> right? I'm not your mama. So I ain't going to come and, and give you cookies and milk and pat you on the back and give you a little pretty sermon and tell you your little bit is good enough. It's not. That's right. It's a mess. When, God, when we can give our all, when we can give it, we're more than capable of giving it and we give a little bit. I'm not going to pat you on the back and say, good job. I'm not. And you know what? I'll be violating my spirit if I did. All right? Some of you leaders do that. Oh, my goodness. How many churches around here do that? You give a little bit, and they say, oh, good job. You said Jesus' name three times in the same sentence. Congratulations. No. Right? No. We got to grow up. And I'm not just talking physically. I'm talking spiritually. One of the characteristics of something that is living is that it grows. And if you are not growing, you are dead. I think that's simple. I think that's simple enough, right? Yeah, right? Fourth thing, you got to group up. You got to be around people that's going where you're going. You got to group it up. Right? If I'm having a hard time giving all, I ain't going to hang out with people that just give 10% all the time. I'm going to hang out with the people that go all out, 100%. Uh, all the people that I hang around over here, this crazy crew, right there. 100% right there. 100%, <laughs> right? Me and Vicky push each other on, push, push, right? But I hang out with people that are gonna get me where I'm going. Right. You gotta have a direction, right? If, you, if you, the people you hanging around, like, they're not going where you going. They just give 50% and you good with 50%? Bless God, oh my goodness, I'm praying for you, right? right. But it's gonna be really, really hard for you to stay in on 50%, right? right? I got one, one good leg, I hurt my knee. In high school, I overstepped. I was racing this girl from Gainesville. And um, she was the fastest in her region. I was the fastest in mine. 200 meter dash. No, it was one, yeah, 200 meter dash. Because she beat me in the 100 meter dash. And I had to beat her. I had to beat her in the 200. <laughs> so I get to the start line and I just take off. It's neck and neck the whole way, whole way. I get to the end of the finish line and I overstep. Because, you know, you can, like, overstep and kind of throw yourself over. I overextended my knee and my tendon ripped off the bone. So I said, oh, mm, I'm rolling on the ground. I go to the doctor. I said, doctor, oh, my goodness, my knee, my knee is gone. It's gone. He said, oh, no, 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 it's all right. You just tore a tendon off the bone. I said, but that sounds kind of serious. <laughs> he said, no, you just, tore it. you just tore it off the bone. You just tore it off the bone. I said, okay. He said, take ibuprofen, wrap it up, ice it, you'll be all right. Well, I didn't, I didn't wrap it up. I didn't ice it. I took ibuprofen. I took it for years. Matter of fact, now ibuprofen does not work for me. Right? Took it and took it. But I did, I did some of it. I did some of it. I took the ibuprofen, but I didn't wrap it up and I didn't ice it. All right? I, I was 18. I am 31. I know. I look good. My mama gave me this good skin. All right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Thir thir 13 years later... I'm at the school, because that's my job, right? And uh, I'm still, and it was a rainy day. And on rainy days, you, you know, the joints, they start aching a little bit. You just kind of like, mm, whoo, Jesus, Jesus' name, Jesus, right? You rub it down in Jesus, right? On rainy days. <laughs> and so we're, they're doing this activity called hopscotch. I mean, it required hopscotch. And I said, fifth graders, y'all move out the way. Let me show you a real hopscotch, right? So I'm moving them out the way, and I started doing hopscotch. Bam, bam, bam. And I landed on that right knee, and it popped. I re-injured it, retore it. And I go to the doctor. He said, hey, 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 why your knee hurting? This happened 13 years ago. You were young. You, it should have healed. I said, oh, I just did some of the things the doctor told me to do. Just some. He, he, oh, he said, oh, that's sweet. You did some of them. I said, yes, sir. He was really sarcastic. I liked him. All right. <laughs> really sarcastic. I said, yeah, I did some of it. He said, oh, oh, that's great. Well, let me tell you a little bit about your recovery. I said, okay. He said, oh, you're going to be wrapping it up and icing it for a while, and you got to take physical therapy. I said, oh, okay. He said, but I don't think all that stuff is going to help. I said, what you talking about? He said, well, you didn't do all that your doctor told you to do. I said, but I did some of it. He said, oh, yeah, you did some.
some of it. Now that, that, that tear has healed itself over, and now when, when you did that hopscotch, it moved in there, and all those tendons, those ligaments, all of that, they healed the wrong way. And so now, just because you did some of it, you might, you might not have to have a knee replacement. Great job. But guess what? You don't have to wear a brace. I said, oh, what, for, for a week? He said, oh, no, no, yeah, no. I said, what, two weeks? Mm -mm, no, mm -mm. Uh, three weeks? Mm -mm, no. A month? You know how my face is? A month? He said, no, no, not a month. I said, what you talking about? He said, oh, I'm thinking at the least it's going to be a year. I said, a year? <laughs> a year? A year? Right. I got I to gotta stop doing all the things that I like to do because I didn't do all I knew to do at the beginning. And now it's affecting me now. Right? It's, not, it's affecting me now. So all the things that we just put off, all the things that we put off, because you know what? Hey, 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 you know what? We could give a little bit. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. And maybe right now it will be all right. But let me go ahead and tell you down the road it's going to affect you. And not only is it going just to affect you, it's going to affect the people around me, you. My, my, my father left the family when we, were, when we were younger. My real dad left us first. He, he left Vicky and I before we were born. He left 100%. All. All of it. It went a little bit. Did it affect me and my sister? Absolutely. Face abandonment. Rejection. All this good stuff. Oh, but my stepdad, the man that raised me, my daddy, left us when we were 15. A hundred percent. All the way gone. Did it affect me? Yes, it did. Right? So you may not think your halfway doing things affect people right now. But let me go ahead. When you said, Jesus, I accept you in my heart, you, came, you became a part of a family that was bigger than yourself. And when you decided you're going to do things 50% for Jesus, just like you do things 50% for your parents, do 50% 50, 50 or even 10% for, for yourself, it affects those of us around. I need you in order to fulfill my purpose. I, I need you to fulfill 100% of my purpose. And you need me to fulfill 100% of your, I can't afford you to go 50-50. I can't afford you to go 25 or 10. I need you to go all. And guess what? God needs us to go all too. He's the, we're the only thing he has to work with. Right? We're the only thing he has to work with. I won't go back to the way I used to be. It's a commitment. It requires us to make that all out. Go hard or go home. Right? Lecrae said it. Right? I know it ain't in the Bible, but Lecrae said it. Right? Go hard or go home. God is requiring us to go all out. Not give it a little bit and call it all. Right? Not give it a new name just because it sounds good, because it feels good. He needs us to go all out. And when we do all that we know how to do, there's a grace that God takes over. Hey, you did all you know how to do. Let me do it now. Let me take it over. Right? You prayed all you can. You prayed in tongues all you can. Oh, you pushed all you can. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. Right? But we don't get to that I got you phase until we do all that we know how to do. Right? Close your eyes, guys. You know what? God needs us to give all that we got. All that we got. Every single bit that we got. You may be saying, and you know what? I give my all when I like it, when I like what I'm doing. But you know what? God needs us to give our 100%. He needs us to do all 100% of the time, whether we like it or not. You look at me, you say, and you know what? I know I don't. I don't give all out. I need some grace. I need some help. Guess what? I'm going to pray for you tonight. I got my leaders that pray for me when I don't feel I can go, go. Miss Carol and Mr. Randall helped me out with this lesson. Miss Lynn Lou, right? Vicky, we, we need each other in order to go all, all out, right? So you say, hey, Ann, I need you to pray for me. I need some help. I realize I don't, I don't go all out. But if that's you, I want you to come on up to the front. We're gonna pray for some, some grace tonight. We're gonna pray for some grace. Guess what? We need grace. We gotta go all out. God requires us to go all out. Father. We got to go all out. So right now, 
it is a decision. The decision you make to go all out begins tonight. It begins tonight, right? My hands on your head is not gonna change, right? It's not gonna change, it's just gonna give you grace. My hands are not anything, they're just hands that like to draw and have fun, right? Right? They're just hands. But you know what? God is so much bigger. But you got to make a decision that you are going to go all out. You're going to do all that you know how to do. It takes courage. It takes boldness. Right? Right? So I want you to do something for me. I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. We're going to start with a decision. Right? We got to go 100%. We're going to start by giving God 100% right now. We're going to go all out that right now today that we make a commitment that we're going to do all, do all that we know how to do. Right now, in your own words, in your head, you make a commitment to God. If you you mean it, you mean it. If you don't mean it, don't, don't say it. Right? We don't need any broken promises, right? But if you make a commitment today, and I'm not saying that we're not going to fall. You know, I'm not saying you're not going to mess it up. But guess what? There's repentance. There's His grace. Right? But that requires a commitment right now. Right now, we change it. Right? We won't go back to the way we used to be. Today is the day. Right now is the moment that we commit that we're going to do all to stand. some good hands good hands make that commitment tell God tell God in your own words right now out your mouth right now tell him hey you know what I want to commit I'm going to do 100% 100% of what you have for me to do 100% I'm going to get up I'm going to give up I'm going to grow up I'm going to group up 100% right now no excuses no excuses I've been I'm a chosen generation I want to do all that you have me to do Right now, you make a commitment right now in your heart. Right now. Right now. Father, we thank you that right now our hearts are open. That we make a commitment that you are more important than how we feel and what we think. We thank you that from this moment on, our life is changed and turned around. I thank you that this is a day of demarcation. This is a turning point in our life that we don't give excuses any place. We don't give laziness any place. We don't give pride any place. But Father, we make a commitment right now to do all that we know how to do. Father, we thank you for your grace tonight. We glorify you in your grace tonight. We hold fast to your covenant. We hold fast to to our commitment to you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for your grace. We thank you, Father. We won't look back right now. We won't look back. We thank you, Father. I thank you for passion. Passion, passion, passion. Right now in the name of Jesus to do all that we know how to do. We go do all that we know how to do. We thank you for your grace, Father. We thank you, Father. Right now, I thank you, Father, for strong hearts. Strong mind that we are strong in a good courage. Strong in a good courage. I thank you, Father. We are strong. Strong in a good courage. Strong in a good courage. I thank you for your grace, Father. I thank you for your grace, Father. Thank you for your strength. We thank you for your grace right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you.
Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God Almighty. How I many? Who got something? Who got an impartation tonight? Y'all got it? Did you get it? Praise God Almighty. Y'all can have a seat. Have a seat. Thank you. Thank you for staying hooked up. Praise God. You know, I heard when Ann was teaching too, you know, um, the scripture that came to me was, uh, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed. Y'all remember that? Y'all know that one, right? <laughs> you have the faith the size of a mustard seed. If a mustard seed is all the faith you have, then you in a good place, right? That's right. All that you got. All that you got. If it's a sunflower seed, all that you got, right? If it's a watermelon seed, all you got, right? Right? Praise God. Something powerful happened tonight. Yes. Very powerful. I'm going to go ahead and let you know. Let me give you a heads up. Tomorrow morning, leave your shoulder shrugging. Pack that up with, pack that up with your clothes tonight, okay? <laughs> also, all this, the blank stares, like, when I ask you a question, the blanks, pack that up with your clothes tonight, okay? Because tomorrow morning, let me go ahead and tell you, for those of you that have been dozing off the whole time, we're going to do some work tomorrow morning. Come ready. Y'all ready? You ready now? Y'all just committed. Are y'all ready? All right, all right, all right. We're going to see. Come ready. Come ready in the morning. Leave your sleeping bag at home. Leave your sleeping pillow at the house. You ain't going to need to doze off tomorrow morning, okay? Y'all with me? Y'all good? Yeah, all right. Good, good. Um, at this time, I am going to dismiss all of our visitors. Thank you so much for coming to Chosen tonight. Thank you. Y'all give them a hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. We so appreciate you guys. Thank you. And for our Chosen individuals, we know that we have Afterglow, right? right. There is Afterglow. But before we go to Afterglow... We're going to turn it up one more time. Y'all ready to turn it up? Come on, come on. Get your stuff. Get your, uh, no, don't get your stuff. Y'all might step on it. Don't get your stuff. You might step on your cell phone. <laughs> and then that'd be something you have to pay for. Come on up. Let's turn it up. Let's turn it up. I don't know. We'll see. I don't think y'all can handle it. Y'all ready to turn it? How much y'all ready to turn? All of it. Y'all gonna wait a minute. No, y'all gonna turn some of it up. No? Y'all gonna turn a quarter of it up. Gaina, you you with me, Logan? You with me, Logan? Logan, you with me? You you hundred percent with me? That's my boy. Y'all ready to turn it up? All right. Y'all get shake it out. Shake it out. Y'all ready? Let's turn it up. 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 Look, y'all like that more than anything else. Lord. <laughs> Is that me? Is that me, Eric? Is that me? Okay. One, two. Let's turn it up. 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 Let hey, hey, what? Let's turn it up. Let's turn it up. Let's turn it up. Let's turn it up. Y'all ain't turning enough. What? Y'all crank it up a little bit, more. Hey, let's crank it up. Let's turn it up. Let's turn it up. Let's turn it up. Let's turn it up.
turn it up one more again. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to make one announcement. We're going to be outside. Yeah. Outside. <laughs> outside. We will have a bonfire. Where's Mr. James? James. I have to tell you. Let me be, um, let me tell you something though. Let me tell you something. I'm putting my faith out there. When I was 15, Fire and me were best friends, and that's a scary thing. Fire and I have always been friends, okay? Not always in a positive light. So therefore, out of experience, I'm going to tell you there are rules, safety rules, around the bonfire. Do not go around the bonfire turning it up, okay? <laughs> we do not need you to accidentally burn it up okay that's your story that's a true story and that's on point that's on point tj don't burn anything up including your skin or your hair or anything any other items there y'all feel me y'all listening to me though right there's a protocol be careful around the fire mind yourself be disciplined okay you guys can go ahead and exit to parish parkway Whenever you get your items, okay, we're going to go out to the back. Thank you.